how do we help the child who is perhaps not being invited into a circle or not being chosen as a playmate kind of look at themselves with compassion in a way and say, oh yeah, maybe I am doing something that's making me not a desirable playmate. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Yeah, totally. Um, so that self-awareness, right, is, is so important. And as a young, as a little person, they're not going to be able to have that reflective capacity, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but what we as parents can do rather than get defensive for this kid that we could probably see where, where you know, it's coming across this way. We don't yeah. want to deny and go, oh, you're fine. They, you don't need them. That's what a lot of parents do, right? It just gets to this, uh, you know, place where, where forget them. Ah, you know, uh, unfortunately, they don't want to forget them. That's why they're here and upset, right? You know, they, they do like them and they do want to play with them. And so when they're feeling like, well, why don't, doesn't anybody want to play with me? Um, we do have to kind of look and say, like, yeah, what, what could be happening? And so, so what, what, what I usually do is I sort of very gently um, say, is it possible, you know, that, you know, this is happening when you do this? Like when, when X is happening, is it possible that they don't like that or that it feels like it's too much or it feels like um, it's too little, right? You know, like depending on the child again, right? Uh, um, so that you're just sort of putting it out to like, eh, is it possible? Like, could this be happening? Like, sometimes people don't like it when, and then I'll come up with an example of something that uh, sometimes I don't like it when somebody's doing this, you know, too much, and then I feel like I need to be away for a little bit. So you're just kind of normalizing it too, that there's tons of people like this, right? You know, and maybe we can look and see our, what our impact is um, that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. I yeah. Like the thing, part that really stuck out to me in that, what you just said is, um, the curiosity or, or is it possible that, or, you mm -hmm. know, maybe this, or can we consider that? Or I like, I do. And that is such yeah. a, it really is a, it's a, it's that more open spacious kind of place for, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Curiosity to turn into awareness, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure at some point we'll talk about this in more depth, but I've started this thing called Worry to Wonder, and I think I started it, but I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, but basically I've asked people to to shift from when they say, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. I'm, I'm like, can you, just, can you just say instead, I wonder about this and I wonder about that? Because to me, the energetic uh, response is fear to curiosity, Right. And that immediately opens me up to going, looking around, going, I wonder what's going to happen versus, oh my God, I'm so worried about what's going to happen, right? This will never solve my problem. This might, right? You know, uh, so, so it sort of speaking to that as well in terms of just helping children stay in a wonder state, which they naturally are. We shift them to worry. Uh, and, and so we have to be conscious of ourselves and staying in that wonder language so that they pick that up from us, right? Does that make sense? Beautiful.